So Chris, get Santa. Bit of a change of direction for you. We know you for your horror. Severance, mm -hmm. Creep, Black Death, Triangle. And they've done a family film about Santa Claus. Mm -hmm. where, where, did the, where did that come from? I just had a little boy, my son Harper, five years ago, just after Black Death, and I, I, I kind of felt I'd like to make something for him, you know, that he could watch, that, the usual story. And then I went to over the pub and sat there on my own and thought of what's a really good fish out of water story and I thought of E.T. and then I thought well, if we do a Christmas movie because it was Christmas at the time. Christmas, you know, it just sort of came organically about w what would it be to make a, a comedy, a straight down the line comedy that has this about something. And when I was thinking about E.T. and I was thinking about how that movie is such an amazing classic movie and it has this real sense about divorce and families breaking up and what is a family Christmas. It was all these sort of themes that came in. How can I make something that feels a little different but that, that but also ticks all the ticks all the box at Christmas time for the families, but actually is about something as well. Yeah, I mean it's got there are a couple of themes that I've I've, I've seen in other Christmas films. You've got um, Jim Broadbent plays Santa, and mm -hmm. you're not quite sure is he really Santa or just mm -hmm. a guy who thinks he's Santa. So it harks back to Miracle on 34th That's Street, right, yeah, yeah. and the relationship between Rafe Spall as Steve and uh, Kit Connor as his son Tom. Um, the relationship is very similar to the relationship with um, Tim Allen and his son in The Santa Claus. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So were, I mean, were they definite influences on you? Yeah, I, not 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 so much the Santa Claus, which I hadn't seen, but the the kind of. Um yeah, I think that, you know, again, it was E.T. for me. It was the idea of the absent father and the idea of, of, a, of a dad that wants to do well and, and he wants to have the perfect day with his son, but all his son wants to do is spring Santa from prison, and which means that sort of metaphorically it's like the son becomes the naughty friends that are leading you back into crime. And, and, and so he, he has to keep saying no, no, no to the son, but then once he realises that, the, it, you know, maybe the son, maybe this is right, maybe this guy is who he says he is, and what if he is who he says he is, and obviously as an adult, you're not gonna do that for a long time because you, you, you lose that magic of Christmas and you and that's what the film's about. And in the end, he kind of th gives himself fully back to Christmas and, and saves Christmas and becomes the, you know, the dad that he always, his son always knew he was, so. Yeah, now Jim Broadbent, fantastic as Santa. Was mm -hmm. he your first choice and was he hard to get? He was our first choice. He wasn't, um, you know, it, it, actors are only hard to get if they don't want to do it. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? We sent him it. He said he loved it. We we met, and and that was that. It was kind of, and bless Jim, he's a he's a legend, and he was attached to this movie for about three years, with never dropped away, and never, you know, we never kept writing to him or anything. We just knew that he said yes, and it took a while to to get finance because I had to get the script perfect, and then. You can only make this film at a certain time of year because if it pushes past Christmas into January, you know you haven't got enough time to finish the CGI before Christmas. Mm. So we, one year we just missed our deadline. Had to wait a whole another year to make the movie. And as you know, you can't just go off and make another movie because if you want to make this movie, you've got to you've got to be available. So it's taken longer than I thought to, to get this film to the screen. Yeah, and again, Rafe Spall as Steve, was he, was he your first choice? No, I, he, he was always my first choice in the sense of I wanted someone like Rafe, but obviously when you start to make a movie, you, you have a list of who to go to. It's like, you know, Tom Cruise is at the top, and you know, they, mm. and so you have to kind of jump through some hoops, but we, we, we ended up with Rafe, who, who was, there's no one could have done the role better. He's got that perfect balance between serious dramatic actor and comedic actor, and there's not many actors that can do that. They're usually either comedy actors or serious actors. He can do both. Um, so we were very lucky, yeah. Yeah, and he, and he does it very well. He does it all he's, good. He's perfect yeah, I in think the role. He's brilliant in the role, yeah, I think he's yeah. great. And Kit Connor is great as his son Tom. Where, where did you find Kit? So we just trawled and trawled through loads of auditions. Our casting director did a great job, and um, we had actually seen Kit about three or four weeks before we finally settled on him and the casting director looked back through and I think I think we've already found this kid you know I think he's I think it's Kit you know I wanted someone that was a bit like the Elliot character from E.T. someone who was sweet and young enough to be fully engaged in the magic but not being so young that, that you've got problems with how young the kid is for hours of shooting and all that kind of thing. Yeah and uh, finally what's next for you we're going to see another family film or are you going to I'm Head back to horror. Yeah, I'm definitely <laughs> going to make another family film at some point. I've really enjoyed this process, and I really feel like I've got a little thing for it. That I think I've got a good voice for it, if you like, as a slightly naughty sense of humour. Um, but the next thing I'm doing, it looks like, is a thriller. So I'll be back with Alan Jones at Fright Fest. It's a thriller called Detour, uh, which is set in America, but filmed in South Africa. So that's hopefully going to be the next thing. All right. Thanks, Richard. Nice one. All right, mate. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>